Okay, well, we're going to do a, an Evo diary special on a recent uh, purchase of mine, the Lancia Integrale Evo 2 you see here. Um, spectacular car, but I think before we actually go into the details of this car, we ought to go over the history of the Lancia Delta itself, because it's actually based, the Delta arrived on the market in 1979, so this is a, it's a 70s hatchback, and it was brought in, it's a Jario design, uh, to compete with the VW Golf, which was sort of new in the 70s and a new way forward, so a front wheel drive, transverse engine, little hot hatch. Um, there weren't really any hot versions until later in the 80s when they did a HF turbo version, uh, front wheel drive, but Lancia have always had this history of competition cars and out on the world rally scene they've always done incredibly well and that was the early 80s, the era of the Group B cars and they started out with a Lancia 0037 rear wheel drive, space frame and actually won a world championship with it, but it, it was going four wheel drive at the time. So what were they going to do? Well they decided to come out with something called the Lancia Delta S4, a pure Group B rally special, mid-engined, tubular frame, but four-wheel drive crucially, uh, turbocharged, supercharged engine, um, all wishbone suspension and it had around 500 horsepower and they did really well but they didn't quite overcome the Peugeot. The Peugeot 205 T16 was winning the World Championship at the time and then 1986 they had some tragic accidents in the World Rally Championship and they got banned, Group B got banned. So Lancia had a little scratch of what they're going to do and they thought, well, we're going to introduce, we've got this Lancia Delta Turbo, why don't we put four-wheel drive into that? And in 1987, they turned up with a Group A Lancia Delta, Johan Kankinen at the wheel, and blow me, won the World Championship in 1987 with a Lancia. And they thought, well, that's good, let's go and do it again. So they did it in 1988 and won the World Championship again. Again in 1989, I thought, I can't believe we're going to win it again. And they came out, they thought we ought to add some power. So they came out with 16 valve head later in the season, won the championship again. And in 1990, won the world championship again. So that was five on the trot. And then 91, they thought, well, we ought to make some more mods because people were starting to catch them up. Um, and they came out with this version, a sort of Evo version of more suspension travel, a bit more power and won the world championship again. In 92, they said, well, this is getting a bit too easy. Um, perhaps we ought to give up um, doing a works entry and just supplied cars to uh, Matini Racing. And they won the world championships uh, that year as well. So this car won six world championships on the trot from 1987 to 92. And that is why it's such a special car. Now I'm going to take you around some of the details to what makes this such an amazing car. The thing about the Delta being a 70s car is actually tiny. So it's 3.7 meters long and compare it to something like today's Clio, you can sort of see just how small it is. It's about the same size as the Fiat Panda today to give you an idea, but against something like an Audi Quattro, it's nearly three quarters of a meter shorter. It's about two foot shorter. And it did that by having this transverse engine in it but they wanted to get a greater track to give it more speed through the forest so over the years it gradually got a wider and wider track until you get to the Evo 2 when it's just simply mad it's almost comical how wide they made the arches to get that ultimate wide track on it the other thing is of course they added horsepower we, we know about the 16 valve head and then they changed the turbo and various management things and it was all a matter of how much air they could get into this poor little hatchback to feed the turbo to produce the power and then vent all the heat out so you'll see at the front even the headlights here became a part of the grill there's grills here those spotlights come out and they feed the brakes more radiators here there is stuff with radiators there's even a radiator for the power steering pump which apparently with chance of overheating on the sort of south african rally and events like that you never ever use it in a road car you can't imagine you're overheating from so much action at the wheel that you're going to overheat your power steering but this little ANSI delta has got that on it well the business end of the integrale here we are, the red cam covers mean this is the most powerful engine to go into the road going integral. So 215 horsepower, 230 foot pounds of torque on overboost. But this engine being Lancia, it always seems to be on overboost, so it never really dips below there. But some of the things I want to show you in here, first of all, uh, you've got the intercooler here feeding into the engine there. But it's this, the fact it's got actually got a strut going across the engine bay, that's actually standard on these, because again, the 70s hot hatch was never meant to be a world rally car, so they had to do everything they could to try and stiffen up the, the shell on it. 
other trick bits on here. This is proper anorak stuff, but you'll see that the strut is almost, well, it's, it's proud of the, uh, the actual wings themselves because they actually came up to give it even more wheel travel on the Evo versions. They built up this to give that much extra suspension travel, which meant that the bonnet all had to change. And I love the shape of the bonnet because they had to pack all this stuff in here. And I can just see this sort of YTS boy and he just had to modify the bonnet to fit. And I reckon he just slammed it and that's sort of the shape it took because it has to clear that suspension bay and the bigger engine. So that's why on a Lancia Integrale Evo 2, it stands right up here on the bonnet. Another core cool part of the Integrale success is its four wheel drive system. And it's a properly tricked system on here. How they do it is they have a central differential that sends 53% uh, of the power to the uh, rear, 47 to the front open diff at the front, but the rear, they've got a torsion uh, diff, which is really trick. It doesn't fully lock up, only up to 70%. And the centre diff can actually alter the power between 47 and 53, or send it all to the rear, whatever that happens, you know, what it needs for grip purposes. Works really, really well. And again, at the rear, they widen uh, the track again, so we've got these crazy blister arches you can see here, and 16-inch wheels on this final edition. But the cool thing about the Integrale, and especially this Evo 2, is its rear suspension. They really um, put some effort into making it enormous travel on a little hatchback like this. So this is completely unique suspension. And you don't normally look at the suspension on a car, but this one is actually worth it. You'll see the tiny little bars go straight to the center, straight to the outside wheel. It means it has massive control right through the whole range of its suspension movement. And it's a core reason why this car was so successful as a rally car. So moving around to the rear, other ways of spotting whether this is an Evo 2 or not is this adjustable rear spoiler, which is in full turbo nutter mode. Uh, you adjust it on here. I just love the stance of it. it. I mean, this is a world rally car, so I think it should look like that on the road. Other things at the rear are, it's a single outlet exhaust. It's a bit of a shame really, doesn't, uh, the, the early cars had twin outlets, but the Evo 2's moved to a single outlet. And then the blue badge that says Integrale there, just signifies as Evo 2. But the most important thing about the Lancia Integrale is how it drives. So let's take this one out on the road and see how it performs. One thing I really love about the Integrale is as soon as you get in, it just feels absolutely bang on. The seating position um, is perfect. These seats are um, Recaro's, wing Recaro's. I had them in an E30 M3 before and they were just the best road seats I've ever come across. And with Alcantara, they sort of grip you. And then there's the Momo Corsa wheel. It's perfectly placed. I actually put an extension uh, on the car, which I've done on quite a few Italian cars to get rid of that sort of arm outstretched sort of feeling brings it a bit closer and it's like it's like when you sit in a go-kart you're, you're just going off one of those fun you know events inside a uh, go-kart and just feels right as soon as you get in that's what the integrale feels like now oh, there's some great roads around here as well because it's it's one of those cars that just loves sort of the british b road it's what it's made for and then we'll go out on some of my favorite roads up quite close to here and just get a sense of what it's like. Well, the other things you get on the Evo 2 is, is a different dash layout to other Integrales. You get it in this yellow paint for the, for the numerals. And it's slightly confusing when you look at it because the speedo is sort of spinning round. So I'm doing 80 kilometers an hour at the moment, which is about 12 o'clock. And then the taco is round to 3000 RPM and that's at six o'clock. So they're sort of spinning the other way and you keep sort of looking down and not quite making out what they're saying, but they do look terrific. Being a 95 uh, age car, turbo lag is an issue. This Evo 2 had a smaller turbo in it and they say, oh, it really gave it some bottom end ground. It doesn't really work like that. It's a very top endy car. I, there we go, it comes alive at 3,000 and then I don't know if you can hear, but it then starts to build 4,000 and we're away. It's really quite a rush at the top speed, and it, and it actually boosts right up to its um, red line. Anyway, we'll go down to one of my favourite little bits of road. But it actually, I, you know, I quite like turbo cars because I think they're quite addictive, the way they deliver the power. And because you've got this fantastic chassis to play with, you know you've always got grip. So it's, a, it's the way to drive an Integrale is really just to chuck it in and then boost, add boost 
earlier than you think, so you hit boost as you hit the apex, and you just storm out the corners. And because it's got all this wheel travel, it just eats. You don't have to slow down for the road surface. You, anything that you throw at it, it just laps it up and you charge down. And it's why people love the Integral. I talk to past owners of them, and they all go wistful eyes, oh, the Integral. And uh, they seem to, it's one of those cars they really love. And they, they do a lot of miles in them because it, they're sort of usable. We've got, you know, we've got four doors, four seats. Um, so they use them sort of for the school run and everything. And it's one of the troubles when I was trying to buy an Integral, he was trying to find a good one that wasn't worn out. I found this finally after a lot of looking. Um, it's 55,000 kilometres. All the speedos are all, even if they've got a mile on to speedo, they're always recording kilometres. So it's done about 35,000 miles, something like that. Which isn't a lot when you consider this car is the very last one made. This one is registered Jan 95, but that still makes it um, 18 years old. So trying to find a good one is the hardest part of an Integrale, but find a good one and you just have a ball, absolute ball. My favourite corners, it's like it's my own rouge. eats it. This is an absolute standard car, completely original, so it's quite quiet as you can probably tell. First thing people tend to do is put a different um, air filter in just to give it a bit more of a bark and obviously change the exhaust. But I really rather like its stealthness about it. There's, you know, I'm playing with um, 215 horsepower nominally. I think is a bit, they term optimised on the boost. I think it's probably this one's got about 240-ish and about 250 foot-pounds of torque. And it's quite a light car, they're around um, 1300 kilos. Again, came back why they dominated rally so, because something like a Audi Quattro, they were about 1440 kilos, so this is instantly 150 kilos lighter than its rivals. Perfectly placed pedals for heel and toe. And the other thing you forget about this age of car is the amount of glass you've got to look out of. It's perfect visibility. Something just demonstrated there, there's something else the Integral is famous for. Squeaks and rattles. Because it's made of oh, horrid 80s plastic, it sounds like the inside of a, a cassette. If you take a cassette, a music cassette, that's the sound of an Integrale on the inside. Just everything sort of moving around, the dash, etc. One of the things about the Integrale, which didn't help sales in the UK, is it is only available as a left-hand drive car. To me, it makes it a bit more special because all the best cars are, like the F40, that's left-hand drive only in an Enzo, and an Integrale. And it's actually why the Japanese love them as well. This is actually came from Japan, and they just love left-hand drive cars. It just makes it more exotic. And I completely agree because you actually get, there are right-hand drive conversions of it, but you don't get the quick steering, and it's quick steering is part of the key to a really good Integrale. And they're rare, by 94, 95, when this car was new, um, they're quite rare cars in the UK, because you really had to be a dedicated enthusiast to take it, to buy one, because they were £25,000 at the time. And back then is when the Impreza, Subaru Impreza, uh, was on the, came on the scene, and that was, same sort of speed really, but 17 and a half thousand pounds. And he sort of went into the Impreza and then the, the Evo, the poor old Integrale um, got left behind. So the last car was sold in 95 and that was it. So you remember, it, it reminds me of this, this period really, late 80s and early 90s. That was when it was absolutely its heyday, where this car dates from. It's one of those cars that it really is true that it's a legend in its own lifetime. And that's what I love about the Integrale. It's absolutely authentic. It's a true rally machine, but the car you got to buy wasn't a marketing special, it's the real deal.